manifestations of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. Maharaj is going to speak on this topic. So, okay, Maharaj, thank you. Jaya Raja Madhava
krishna krishna hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Nitai Gor Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gor Hari Bo Nitai Paramahansa Paribraja Kacharya Ashtatara Sutta Shri Srimad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Iskon Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnupada Srila Bhukta Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Srila Prabhupada Ki Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Nam Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Shikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopagopina Shyamkun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Maya Purdam Ki Ganga Maya Yamuna Maya Ki Tosi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan Ki All glories to assembled devotees All glories to assembled devotees All glories to assembled devotees All glories to Sri Guru Sri Gauranga Nitai Gaur Sitanath Premanande Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Eti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda So the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are all transcendentally sweet. They're just like a mixture of yogurt and camphor and sugar candy. It's just nectar. Wherever we taste the nectar, we want more. 
So this is the nature of the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is generally recognized as being the most merciful of all of the Lord's incarnations. We know how Rupa Goswami glorified Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his prayer, Namo Maha Badanaya Krishna Prema Pridayati. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gora Tivishe Namaha. That of all the incarnations of Lord Krishna, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most merciful. Lord has many incarnations and he comes particularly as Lord Ramachandra and he has his bow and he pierces the hearts of the Rakshasas and as Lord Krishna he decapitated the heads of the Asuras with his Sudarshan Chakra but as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he is coming simply to give mercy, to give mercy to everyone, to deliver everyone. So in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj has described that the Lord's mercy was distributed pr principally in three different ways. One was by his direct presence, what is called Saksha Darshan that directly confronting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, people would get mercy. Another, a second method which Lord Chaitanya used to deliver his mercy to the fallen souls was through this avesha, just like we speak about shaktyavesha avatars. Shakti Avesha, empowered incarnation. So Avesha, the Lord could enter the body and empower personalities on his behalf to distribute Krishna Prem. And then the third manner in which the Lord used to distribute his mercy, his divine mercy, was by this avirbhav potency. Avirbhav means that he could just appear in a place. Although he was considered to be far away in some other place, by his inconceivable potencies, he could suddenly manifest himself in the place. So these are the three different methods by which Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would distribute his mercy. We said Saksha Darshan. Wherever Lord Chaitanya would go, people would simply by seeing him, people would become filled with love of God. They would become ecstatic in love of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go everywhere and just like when he went to uh, Kormastan, he met people there. He told the Brahmana there in Kormastan, he told, Yari Deki Kari Kaho Krishna Upadesh. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell people about Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the Brahmana in to do this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also did this himself. Wherever he went, he would tell people, Bolo, Hare Krishna, chant the holy names of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, he sent also Nityananda, Lord Nityananda with Haridas, that they were also to go door to door and tell everyone to chant the names of Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not the kind of person 
to give the instruction to others and do something different himself. He was also the Acharya and he taught by his own example. Wherever he went and whoever he met, he would ask people to chant the names of Krishna. And they did. They would all become inspired with love of God simply by meeting and seeing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so people would flock in large numbers. They would all come. They would all want to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in, when he would meet with all the people, he would just simply request them. Chant the names of Krishna. So this was how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu distributed mercy through his Sakshad manifestation, directly confronting people and giving them love of God. And then his second method was Avesha, that he could enter into the body of people and empower them. We, we talk about somebody's empowered to give the holy name. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj has described Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan. Krishna Shakti Vini Nahi Tara Pravartan. That in the Kali Yuga, the religious process is the chanting of the holy name. And in order to propagate the chanting of the holy name, the qualification to propagate the chanting of the holy name is one has to have Krishna Shakti. One has to be empowered with the energy of Lord Krishna. Just like example is given, maybe you have to go to court, you're involved in some legal proceedings. So you may not like to go to court and you may ask a lawyer to go on your behalf. So the lawyer becomes empowered to enter statements or even a plea on your behalf. So in the same way, a devotee can become empowered on behalf of Lord Krishna to propagate the chanting of the holy name. We know Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the Kali Yuga and the Yuga Dharma is the chanting of the holy name. So the external reason for the Lord's appearance was to propagate the chanting of the holy name. Uh, those people who are intelligent, they will take to the chanting. Krishna Varnam, Tevisha Krishnam, Sangu Pangastra Parshadam, Yagnae Sankirtan Prae, Yajantihi Sumedasaha. So those people who have purified intelligence, sumedha saha, purified intelligence, they will take to the chanting of the holy names and they will join the Sankirtan movement. Unfortunate, some people who think they are educated, they think the chanting of the holy name is just some sentimental emotional display of less intelligent people. They do not understand the actual position of the chanting of the holy name. And talking about his glories, Shivananda Sain was doubtful. He thought, I'm, I don't think it's really possible. Could it really be true? that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has entered into the heart of this Nakula Brahmachari? He was doubtful on hearing this. So, Shivananda Sen decided that he would go there. 
he will go to the place where Nakula Brahmachari is residing. And, and he thought to himself that when I go there, let's see if he recognizes me or if he's aware of me. And if he does know me, then he should also know what is my Ista Deva mantra, which I chant for worshiping the deity. So Shivananda Singh decided that he would do this, he'd make a test. He wanted to test if this Nakula Brahmachari is really genuine or not. We know in the Kali Yuga, there's a lot of cheating goes on. There's a lot of swindlers. Prabhupada said, those who want to be cheated will find a cheater. So even in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was cheaters and there were people who would be cheated. So people claim, they claim this, the spirit of this personality has entered into me. Just like I know if we have a program in Bangkok, Thailand. So people in Thailand, they are fond of demigod worship. They often worship different deities, particularly Durga and Ganesh and Shiva. So they have a, a, a festival every year, which is called, uh, takes place in the time of the Durga Puja. The uh, Dasera, right? Dasera. And at the time of Dasera, there's a big festival and attracts lakhs and lakhs of people. Big crowds of people come. And some people, they claim the spirit of Shiva has entered into them or the spirit of Uma has entered into them and they become, you know, they behave unusually. They behave like they're in ecstasy or they're experiencing some transcendental symptoms. Actually, it's all usually just bogus things. But people do it every year. More and more people come, they want to see this thing and they want to f see the people who are possessed by these spirits. You know, sometimes we talk about it, somebody's possessed by a, a, a spirit and it may be the spirit of some god or goddess. So Shivananda saying he thought maybe this Nakula Brahmachari is just one of these kind of people. Maybe he's not actually genuine. So Shivananda Singh decided to go there and he came to the place where Nakula Brahmachari was staying and he found there were many people. There was a big crowd of people, throngs of people were all there. Oh, everybody wanted to get blessings from him. They all wanted to get the love of God which he was possessing. They wanted to get his darshan, we would say. So Shivananda Singh decided, he thought, I will stay at the back. I'm not going to go forward. Let's see if he's aware. Let's see what happens. So Shivananda Singh was waiting up at the, at the rear, away from everybody. Everyone else was pushing in the front and Nobody, could, he couldn't even see Nakula Brahmachari and Nakula Brahmachari couldn't see him because there were so many people, so many crowd, so big a crowd. But then Nakula Brahmachari instructed the people around him and said, someone, in, someone is here called Shivananda Singh. Go call him to come here. I want to meet him. 
So, being ordered like that by Nakula Brahmachari, three or four men went to the back and they called out, Is anyone here called Shivananda Sain? Nakula Brahmachari wants to meet you. You should come immediately. He wants to see you. So Shivananda Sain, hearing his name called out, I, he thought, oh, I better go. So Shivananda Sain came forward and he sat at the feet. He offered his obeisances to Nakula Brahmachari and he sat at the feet of Nakula Brahmachari. And Nakula Brahmachari looked at him and said, I know you're doubtful. I know you don't believe it, but just to convince you, I will tell you that your Ista mantra is the four syllable mantra of Gorgopal. Those who are devotees of Lord Chaitanya, they chant the four syllable mantra. You know that mantra? The four syllable mantra chanted by all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Goranga. 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 Right? This is a four syllable mantra chanted by all the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the devotees, those who are pure devotees of Radha and Krishna, they also chant a four-syllable mantra. Radha Krishna. Chant. Radha Krishna. Radha Krishna. Srila Prabhupada quotes Bhaktivinoda Thakur in this connection and he explains that those people who chant the name of Goranga and those people who chant the names Radha Krishna are this not different because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. So there is no difference between the chanting of the names of Gauranga and Radha Krishna. So Nakula Brahmachari revealed to Shivananda saying that I know this is your Ishta Mantra. I know who you are. I know your doubts. Now you should be convinced. So Shivananda Sain was very convinced. He was very impressed. You could imagine that he thought, how did he, he'd never met him before. They'd never met each other before. But still, Nakula Brahmachari understood the mind of Shivananda Sain. How did Nakula Brahmachari understand? Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had empowered, had entered into his heart. So this is called the Avesha. Avesha. Nakula Brahmachari's example of this Avesha potency. And it was witnessed by Shivananda Sain. Now Shivananda Sain, he's really a fortunate devotee. Of course, he did a lot of service for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Every year, he would take the devotees all the way from Mayapur to Jagannath Puri. And in the times of Shivananda Sain and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they would all go by foot. And they would have to cross different rivers. They would have to pay different tolls. Shivananda Sain would arrange for everything. He would pay all the expenses. He was such a, a wonderful devotee. 
They would, he would take a big group of devotees with Advaita Acharya and Lord Nityananda would also go and Srivas Pandit, they would all go and with many, many devotees and they'd bring their wives sometimes and the children also would come. And they would all go to Jagannath Puri. Shivananda Sen would arrange their lodgings because it would take them two weeks to get there walking, crossing rivers and walking and then have to stay overnight different places. They need accommodation. It would all be arranged by Shivananda Singh. And he knew all the paths. He knew which way to go. So he was really a benevolent, very kind-hearted devotee. At the same time, he was very responsible. There was another devotee of Lord Chaitanya named Vasudev Datta. Vasudev Datta was a very benevolent person also but he was kind some ways he was extravagant he, he whenever he got any money he would give it away he couldn't he couldn't stand to see a person suffering he couldn't see, he, he couldn't tolerate to see people go in poverty or without proper food or shelter and whenever he got anything he would give it Anybody asked him for something, immediately he would give it. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was not only an acharya in preaching, he also taught us how to care for devotees. The devotee care system, you know, we talk a lot about it in ISKCON, care, devotee care, very important. In Lord Chaitanya's time also, Lord Chaitanya was concerned for the care of his devotees and he told Shivananda Sen, he said, you take care of Vasudev Datta because Vasudev Datta is a family man but he gives everything away to, to other people. He doesn't have anything for his own family. So he told Shivananda Sen, you should take care of his wealth. Don't let him give everything away. So this was something of the nature of Shivananda Sen. So we mentioned about Shivananda Sen with Nakula Brahmachari and then another pastime of uh, Shivananda Sen was with another devotee named Prajumna Brahmachari. Sometimes he's called Prajumna Mishra and sometimes he's called Prajumna Brahmachari. But he also, this Prajumna Brahmachari had another name which was given to him by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this name was Nasringananda. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally named him Nasringananda. Nasringananda was a great devotee of Lord Nasringadev. He used to worship Lord Nasringadev. And it is said, Lord Nasringadev sat in his heart. And Lord Nasringadev would directly speak to him. So he, he was also a very good devotee, this Prajumna Brahmachari or Nasringananda. Brahmachari and he experienced Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Avirbhav form that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could appear from a distant place far away so the Chaitanya Charitamrita describes how this one nephew of Shivananda Sen named Srikanta Sen. He was a young man and he was very attracted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he went on his own to Jagannath Puri and he stayed in Jagannath Puri and Lord Chaitanya gave him a lot of mercy. Lord Chaitanya 
allowed him to associate with her. For about two months, Sri Kanta stayed there and got the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when it came time for Sri Kanta to go back to Navadvip, to his home, Lord Chaitanya told him, he said, when you go back, he said, you tell all the devotees that they don't need to come here this year. Because every year they were coming for Ratiatra. But Lord Chaitanya told Sri Kanta, no need to come there, no need to come this year because I'm coming there. So you tell all the devotees, just stay there. I'm going to come there. And he told the particular month, pause, like December, January time, at that time, I will come there. And he told them that you tell Jagadananda, he should be there, he should be ready to cook the food because Jagadananda was one of the cooks of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he said, I will take his food, he can cook for me. Tell them to prepare everything, I'm coming there. So Sri Kanta came back to Mayapur and at that time the devotees were just getting ready. Advaita Acharya was all ready and they were all go come, going to come to Jagannath Puri, going to go, they're going to leave. But Sri Kanta came back and he told them, no, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you don't come this year. I'm coming to see you this year. You don't need to come to Puri this year. Just wait there in Mayapur. I will come there and see you. So they were all happy. Oh, very nice. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going to come and see us. And Shivananda Singh, Jagadananda, they were all happy. So when it came to that particular month, that month, Jan December, January, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was supposed to come. They prepared everything and they made all the arrangements for the reception of Lord Chaitanya. But still, he didn't come. And they were wondering, what's wrong? And even if, and still, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not arrived. And they were, they'd been pushed vegetables all the time because they thought Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming. We have to have everything ready. And they were, he didn't come. But then what happened was Nishringananda came. Nishringananda, that Prajumna Brahmachari came there. And they welcomed him, especially Shivananda Sain and Jagadananda. They were very anxious because they're the main ones to receive Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when Nishringa Nanda Brahmachari came there, then they, they were happy, they got him to sit down and Nishringa Nanda could see from their faces that, what's wrong? Why do you, why do you all look so unhappy? Devotees were very excited. Shivananda Singh, Jakadananda, they're very happy to hear Lord Chaitanya is going to come. So they purchased vegetables and Jakadananda cooked and made wonderful preparations. And they're bringing plates for offering. And they made very nice offering. They put everything on big leaf plates. And Nishringananda came outside, closed the altar room to make the offering. And he sat outside meditating. And in the course of his meditation, he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he had all three offerings and he didn't leave any remnants. Shivananda Singh, Jagadananda, they were surprised at what happened because they didn't see Lord Chaitanya come. This was his Averbhav appearance, that he appeared, but not everybody was able to see him. He appeared in his divine form 
only those who were very pure devotees, they could see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Nishringananda, he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come there and eat the offering. But the other devotees, they didn't see. And they were wondering what happened. Maybe, maybe this is some trick. Maybe, is it just out of his love that he said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came? So Shivananda Sain had some doubt about what has actually happened here. He could not really understand what had taken place. So it was another, another almost year later when they had gone to Jagannath Puri and they were with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described to all the devotees, he said, you know, last year I enjoyed so much the cooking of Nishringananda and Jagadananda. They cooked so many nice preparations for me, wonderful vegetables and sak and nice cakes and so many things. I, 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 was, I could not stop eating. I ate everything. Actually, Nishringananda, he was a little disturbed when Lord Chaitanya had, et, had eaten all three offerings. We said oh, he offered to Jagannath and he offered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he offered to Lord Nishringadev. So Nishringananda was very attached to his worship of Lord Nishringadev. And he was saying, you know, he, he said to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that how, how you could eat all three offerings. I know you, I know you're not different from Lord Jagannath. So all right, you ate Lord Jagannath's offering. But Lord Nishringadev, what about Lord Nishringadev? Of course, we know there's no difference between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jagannath and Lord Nishringadev. So if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to eat all three offerings, there's nothing wrong. But Jagadananda, he was, or rather Nishringananda, Nishringananda was a little disturbed that you even, you've even eaten the offering of Lord Nishringadev. Therefore, actually this pastime is to show us that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not different from Lord Jagannath and Lord Nishringadev. And Nishringananda witnessed this and Shivananda Sen also witnessed this because Shivananda Sen was there at the time. So Nishringananda, anyway, he told Shivananda Sen, we will have to cook again for Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishringadev didn't get any prasadam yet. So we will have to cook. So they, they cooked again and offered to Lord Nishringadev. So this is the Avir Bhav manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That he just appeared and took the offering. Another time, Nishringananda heard how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going from Kuliya and he was going to go to Vrindavan. So when Nishringananda heard that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to Vrindavan, he decided he would decorate the road for Lord Chaitanya. Just like sometimes I remember when Prabhupada would come here to Mayapur, we'd all meet Prabhupada at the, the big gate here at the entrance and Prabhupada's car would come in the main gate and we would decorate the path all the way up for Prabhupada. We would decorate maybe with Rangoli or flowers and different devotees. So the same way Nishringananda decided he wanted to decorate the road 
for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to go to Vrindavan. So within his mind, he began to decorate the road. He didn't actually do it physically, but he did it mentally. And Srila Prabhupada explains, there's no difference if you serve the Lord mentally or if you serve the Lord physically that you get the same benefit, equal benefit. Of course, we shouldn't avoid doing things physically. We shouldn't be lazy and think, I will just do it mentally. Anyway, Nishringa Brahmachari, Nishringa Nanda was a poor, he was not so wealthy, but he decided within his mind he would dec decorate the road to Vrindavan. So he decorated everywhere along the road. First of all, he made a very nice road, very smooth and clean, sprinkled it with rose water. And then he had stemless flowers of different colors, all to decorate. And then different jewels were also placed. He did everything within his mind in a very wonderful way. He even arranged lakes for bathing along the way and he had different bathing ghats where people could come and bathe and within the bathing ghats there would be nice scented lotus flowers growing and there would be also birds making a nice sound different birds would come flying by and also come and sit in the water of the lakes and then the, he arranged also that along the path, walking along the road, there'd be a very nice fragrant wind blowing. So everything was arranged for the pleasure of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as he walked along this path. Of course, we know this pastime from Nectar of Devotion Prabhupada writes in Nectar of Devotion about the poor Brahmana who had no means to worship Krishna, but he did it within his mind. And within his mind, he was worshipping the deity. And within his mind, he was also cooking for his deity. And within his mind, one day he cooked sweet rice, and one day that he wanted to test the sweet rice if it was cool, and he ended up burning his finger. So the Brahmana was surprised that he could burn his finger. But this shows us that there's no difference that if you serve the Lord in your mind and if you serve the Lord physically, there's no difference. You get the same result. And Prabhupada quotes a verse from Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome bhaktya prayachati, tadanam bhakti uparitam ashnami prayatatmana. That one should offer me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or water, and I will accept it. But the offering has to be made with love and devotion. It is the devotion which is stressed in offering anything to the Lord. And if we offer to the Lord within our mind, with devotion, then certainly the Lord will be happy, will be very pleased to accept. So Nishringa Brahmachari, Nishringa Nanda Brahmachari, he did this. He decorated the road and he was decorating the road and the Lord was going to Vrindavan. But at a certain point, he got to Kanai Natsala, and he couldn't go any further. Nishringananda was puzzled. Why can't go any further? Mahaprabhu is going to Vrindavan. We only got to Kanai Natsala. Kanai Natsala, very wonderful place. We hope you can all go and visit. We have our Iskon temple there. And uh, Kanai means the name of Krishna, and Natsala means the 
place of Krishna's pastimes. So in the past, there were many places called Kanainatsala. Today, we only know one place. It's right on the bank of the Ganga, very picturesque, scenic place. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had visited there and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had also transcendental visions there. Lord Krishna had appeared to him after his initiation in Gaya. When he came back from Gaya, he came through Kanai Natsala and at that time he had seen Lord Krishna. So Nisringananda was meditating and he was in his meditation, Lord Chaitanya was going to Vrindavan. But when they came to Kanai Natsala, could not go any further. Could not go any further. Nasringananda was puzzled. What's wrong? So then Nasringananda Brahmachari told everyone, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not going to go to Vrindavan. He's changed his mind. He's only going to Kanai Natsala and then he's coming back. Sometimes like that, when we meditate, you get to a certain point and you can't go any further. So, it was like that with Nisringananda, with his meditation in this pastime with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They came to Kanai Natsala, couldn't go any further because from Kanai Natsala, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone to Ramakeli. He'd gone to Ramakeli. You have to understand that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to Vrindavan, there were many, many people following him. It, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the golden avatar and he's giving love of God freely to everyone. So thousands of people were following him everywhere. And wherever he walked, people would take that dust, they would take that dirt, they would take it and keep it. They wanted to have the dust which had been touched by the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was so bad that wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu walked, there would be holes in the road because people would take the dirt, they take the dirt. They wanted to get the dust which had touched the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, so many people were following Lord Chaitanya. He wanted to go to Ramakeli to meet Rupa and Sanatan. Rupa and Sanatan at this time, they were still in the, engaged in the service of the Mohammedan government and they had also they, did, they had not been initiated yet they were known as Dabir Khas and Sakara Malik one was the chancellor of the exchequer and one was the chief minister so they had big positions in the service of Nawab Hussein Shah who was ruling Bengal at that time. And this Dabir Khas and Sakara Malik were actually born in Brahmana families which originated from Karnataka. Somehow they have moved to Bengal and they had become taken up by the Nawab Hussein Shah. He saw how expert they were and how efficient they were and he converted them to Islam and had them serve him almost by force. Not that they really wanted to, but they were induced to do it. So they had written to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and described their position. Now, we glorify Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he had delivered fallen souls, right? Dina Hina Yata Chilo Harinam Udarilo Tara Shakshi Jagai Madhai. 
Brajendra Nandana se Sachi Sutta Hailo He Balaram Hailo Nitai. That these two fallen souls, Jagai and Madhai, they were delivered by the mercy of Lord Krishna who came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Balarama who came as Lord Nityananda. So Jagai and Madhai were considered very fallen, but Rupa and Sanatan, when they met with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that we are more fallen than they are. Because Jagai and Madhai, they were born in Brahmana families, and although they'd done a lot of sins, they never took up any service from anybody else. The Brahmana, those who are in the Brahmana caste are not supposed to engage in the service of others. They're meant to keep their own individuality to maintain themselves and they're given six different occupations. Huh? Dan, Dan, uh, yag, yeah, offering worship and accept, uh, teaching others to worship the deities and studying scriptures and teaching others the scriptures and giving charity and accepting charity. These are the occupational duties of the Brahmana. And they're never allowed to take up service from others. But Rupa and Sanatan said, look at our condition. We're so fallen that we have become servants of the Mohammedans. So we're lower than Jaghai and Madhai. Jaghai and Madhai, they never did that. But we have done it. We've We've become so fallen and, you know, they'd lost everything. They'd taken the Muslim names and they were dressed in the Mohammedan clothes, everything. So they felt themselves to be really low and fallen. And they came before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that mood. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted them and he initiated them, he changed their names. Dabir Kas became Rupa Goswami and Sakara Malik became Sanatan. They, they were blessed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed them that you know, you make arrangements, you try to get out from this position. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had come, gone there to Ramakali. He'd, he'd known about them because they had written letters to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In those days, people could write letters. There was no email, there was no mo mobile phone, of course. And there was not even snail mail. You, you'd simply have to give a mail to someone and send it. Whoever was going there, they would carry the message and deliver it. So somehow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had received written letters from Rupa and Sanatan describing their situation. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was supposed to be going to Vrindavan, but on his way to Vrindavan, when he got to Kanainat Sala, he went to Ramakeli and they met Rupa and Sanatan. And when they met Rupa and Sanatan, at that time, they also suggested to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that it's not very good that you're going to Vrindavan with so many people because it will attract a lot of attention. So Prabhupada describes, he says, sometimes people, they have these habits, they will take big groups of people to the holy places just for the sake of financial profit, that you take them there and you, you get a lot of money from them. 
So the Rupa and Sanatan suggested to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that when you go to the holy place, it is better you don't take all these people. All of these people are following you. And if you go to Vrindavan like this with all these people, it will certainly create some disturbance. So, hearing Rupa and Sanatan's words like this, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided this is right. So, after Kanai Natsala, he went back to Jagannath Puri and he told all the people, you go back. We're not going anymore. I'm not going to Vrindavan. I'm going back to Puri. You can all go back to Mayapur. Go back to your homes. So they all went back. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Puri, stayed there for a few days, and then secretly he left without telling anybody. He left and he just took a couple of people with him to be association on the way. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu displayed his mercy to Rupa and Sanatan. We were speaking about Prajumna Brahmachari or Nishringananda, how he could actually see the Lord appearing in different places, although he was far away from there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could appear in four different places. Although he would be away in another place, he would always come, almost every day, he would come to Mother Sachi's home to eat her offering in her temple, in her home. Mother Sachi, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mother, he would come every day and eat the lunch offering which his mother would cook for him. And he would always send, tell people, tell Mother Sachi, I'm enjoying so much her lunch every day. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would appear also in the home of Srivas Pandit because the Srivas Angam, where the Sankirtan was initiated, where the Sankirtan movement was begun, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would appear there wherever there was Kirtan in the home of Srivas. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would appear wherever Lord Nityananda danced. Just like when Lord Chaitanya came to Panihati and Raghunath was instructed by Lord Chaitanya, by Lord Nityananda to put on a big feast. At that time they had a big kirtan and Lord Chaitanya also appeared there for the kirtan. Whenever Lord Nityananda danced, Lord Chaitanya would appear there and dance with Lord Nityananda. And also the fourth place, the fourth place was the home of Raghava Pandit. Raghava Pandit's home in Panihati. Right? Panihati. We have also our ISKCON temple there now also, by the mercy of His Holiness Bhakti Charuswami, a wonderful temple just near to the home of Raghava Pandit is there in Panihati. So, Raghava Pandit's home was also the place where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu liked to go. Because Raghava Pandit was also a very, very dear devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So these four places, the home, the temple there in the home of Mother Sachi, the home of Srivas Pandit, whenever there's Kirtan, wherever Lord Nityananda danced, and also the home of Raghava Pandit. At these four different places, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would appear, his Avirbhav potency. He would manifest himself. So this is how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu distributed his mercy to so many souls. He allowed everyone to taste the nectar of Krishna Prem. It is said, Lord Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago. He brought with him a storehouse of love of God, but the contents were kept sealed. But when the Panchatattva appeared 500 years ago, 
headed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then they broke open that storehouse of love of God and they plundered the contents and they distributed it everywhere without any discrimination. They gave it to the young, they gave it to the old, they gave it to the women, they gave it to the children, they gave it everywhere without any discrimination. This is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as we said, that mercy was visible in three forms, as the Sakshad, Avesha, and Avirbhav. And Shivananda Singh, he personally witnessed all of these manifestations of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All right, so we will stop here. Nearly time for the next speaker. Are there any questions? Do you take questions? Any questions, please? Krishna, thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful class. Please forgive my ignorance. You mentioned as the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are chanting four syllable mantra, Go Ranga. But I thought this is only three syllables. Can you explain to us? Well, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's written as four syllables Ga or Anga. G A U R A N. G A. Ga or Anga. Go Ranga! Go Ranga! Go Ranga! Shil Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Nice class Maharaj. One thing I got is because generally when uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared, just before the, some, some there are three varieties of uh, discussions are there. One he has disappeared from the uh, Jagannath Mandir and some people they are telling uh, in Gopinatha Mandir and some people they are in the version that you know uh, in the sea only that uh, Lord Chaitanya Prabhu disappeared. So actually, we, which one uh, uh, is really we have to? Is there any? Uh, because since you know he has taken the uh, uh, human life now, because human life means somebody. If he's a Lord, okay, he's a Lord. But Lord can take it any moment and anywhere. But since he is a human being, uh, there is a particular. Uh, no. You see, these pastimes are very confidential pastimes. These, this is the, the appearance, the, 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 rather, the disappearance of the Lord is too painful to the devotees. Therefore, you don't see it narrated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita or in the Chaitanya Bhagwat. Because the devotees of the Lord, it's too painful for their heart to even think about the Lord leaving the world. And just as when the Lord took sannyas, the devotees were heartbroken. It was unbearably painful to them. And what to speak of when the Lord disappeared and finished, completed his pastimes from this world. It was inconceivably painful to them. Therefore, these things, it, it's just not a topic for discussion, really. We don't like to even discuss it. But the Lord decided to leave the world. How he did it, does it matter? We know the Lord's everywhere. He's in everything. He's in his deity form. He's in his holy name. So we have to be satisfied with his other manifestations. We have to feel the Lord is present with us. We don't like to think of the Lord 
being separate from us and going away. It's too much painful to the heart. But those people who are non-believers, then they will have some theory about it. They will try to ex give some speculative understanding. Just like when Krishna left this world, there's so many people, they think, oh, Krishna was shot in the arrow, shot by an arrow in the foot and he died. Like, you know, people don't understand. Abhijananti mammudha manushim tanamashratam. The foolish mock at me descending amongst them like a human being. They do not know my transcendental nature and supreme dominion over all that be. The Lord said himself, although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates, I still appear in every millennium. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord himself. He has a divine form. We cannot think of him disappearing, leaving the world, but he concluded his pastimes. He's still here in Mayapur now performing kirtan, performing sankirtan. But we don't have the eyes to see him. But those who are pure, they can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada could go out in the night and he could meet the sankirtan of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's going on. We don't have the eyes or the ears to hear, to witness it, but it's there. So, we just have to try to understand everything guided by sadhu, shastra, and guru. So, nobody, they don't speak about it. You know, why should we, we should just simply understand the Lord decided to conclude his pastimes. How he disappeared? Maybe all three ways in which you said. He could do that if he wants. Nothing is inconceivable for the Supreme Lord. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Maharaj, for wonderful past times we have explained and uh, we all were in the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's past time right with his associates intimate associates so we'll thank to Maharaj that he has made us to enter into that we'll thank by chanting three times Haribol Haribol So this is second day of Shravanotsav. Those